if you really want to have less karma and cause less pain, less suffering and less sorrow for the plants, you can choose, you can select some special plants or special fruits to eat. I have done a little research into the kinds of vegetables and fruits that have no pain at all, or very little pain. You see, our planet is materialized and becomes valuable due to all the beings on this planet's merit, collective merit put together. So the planet will materialize and become livable. And then the planet would be disintegrated, be destroyed, be made to disappear. Also because of the humans, the beings on the planet's lack of merit by their actions, by doing something contrary to building up merit, by doing things that destroy the merit or are devoid of merit. We are not blessed to have this home as a planet anymore. Please continue watching to find out more. On Saturday, April 20th, 2024, while still in her meditation retreat for the world, our most beloved Supreme Master Ching Hai, vegan, graciously shared valuable deep insights on the capacity of beings from the fruit and vegetable kingdoms to feel pain and how we can choose those that have less or no pain karma to eat. Master also elaborated on the negative force influencing humans, the challenging lives of real enlightened masters, the rare opportunities to follow their teachings, and more. God bless it. Greetings, beautiful souls, wonderful people, beloved of God. May all of you be happy, full of vigor, full of wonderful events in your life. Last time we were talking about karma, but up to now we only talk about the karma from humans and other beings such as animal people. But we have not gone deep into the karma of special beings like plants and trees. Trees we mentioned sometimes before. But plants, I think, quite rarely. So today, I would like to talk about that. Because I was editing some of the earlier public conferences, and one of the questions from the audience was, should people go to the extent of creating no karmic consequences, like uh, being breatharians, for example? And I don't think most of the humans on the planet are ready for that. So we will just concentrate more on the vegan diet. You see, with the vegan diet, we also have to be involved with many kinds of you know, beings in the vegetable and fruit kingdoms, such as apples, oranges, the usual fruits that people eat every day. So I just want to tell you that we could be vegan with very little karma and little harm to the plant beings. It is surprising to know that some of the plants, some of the vegetables that we eat, do not feel pain or feel less pain than other plants, other vegetables. If you really want to have less karma and cause less pain, less suffering and less sorrow, for the plants, you can choose, you can select some special plants or special fruits to eat. I have done a little research into the kinds of vegetables and fruits that have no pain at all, or very little pain. The ones that I read here should have very little pain and suffering when you kind of cut them or pluck them to eat. Even fruits, 
when you pluck them from the trees, such as oranges, apples, mangoes, or papayas, the plants or the trees that bear these fruits do feel pain. I mean, like physical pain, even though they can't scream out loud to you. It's like nipping, like somebody nips your skin hard, that kind of pain. And also they feel so panicky and fearful. And as you can see, sometimes you cut the plant and some liquid comes out, fluid comes out from the plant. That is their sort of blood, just like we bleed when we are injured or cut. Most of the plants and trees, they do feel pain when we cut them for any reason like for consumption. I only list here for you those plants, those vegetables, even those herbs, which do not feel such pain. Now, I'm reading some of them, not very orderly, because I just wrote down what I knew and fast. It's not a complete list. A rough rule is if the vegetable or plant you take food from contains mostly water, or their body is just made of fiber, such as the like of uh, the banana plant, then it is most likely that they are painless, though there are exceptions. I didn't categorize them into alphabetical order, so I read what I wrote down for you. In case you want to choose the lesser pain and lesser suffering for the plants or the trees, all the trees feel pain when you cut them for any reason. And most of the vegetable plants do feel pain. So these are the ones that have very, very little or no pain at all. I'm reading those which have no pain at all. Watercress, cabbage, water spinach, cauliflower, coriander, when they're young and sprouted very shortly, as if they are just still a sprout, not when they have already grown into plants and almost having a hard body. When they don't have yet a hard body, just like young sprouts, then it's okay. Then they don't feel pain yet. Soya sprouts, pumpkin sprouts, it's okay. Rice, uh, wheat, Corn, sugar from sugar cane, bread you can eat, yes, from wheat. You can have a lot of choice, like even vegan pizza, vegan butter if it doesn't contain olive oil, asparagus, rocket, and tofu you can eat, tempeh, seaweed. Of course, you can eat vegan brown sugar or castor sugar raw and not uh, processed at all sugar. But of course, you should eat less sugar, yeah? Sugar is not that good for you. The less, the better, yeah? Broccoli, onions, garlic, all kinds of melons you can eat. Cucumber can do. Sesame seeds, all seeds, peanuts, uh, almost all nuts you can eat. Because when they dry, they fall down to the ground, and then you can pick them up and eat them. In principle, anything that has fallen from the tree already, you can eat. When I was in Germany, along the roads, there were many apple trees. They don't belong to anyone. They just grow on the roadside. And I saw that many apples fell to the ground. I sometimes picked them up. They were green, not completely ripe or anything. And I picked them up and came home and made apple pie. <laughs> this you can do, yeah? Mostly like that. Or nuts you can eat. Most of the nuts is then dry and fell from the tree. You can eat all kinds of beans, fresh or dry beans. Lentils, uh, mushrooms, all kinds of eatable, not poisonous mushrooms you can eat. Avocado, surprisingly, you can pluck and eat. Iceberg. Lettuce, romaine, lettuce, mustard greens, mustard leaves, kohlrabi, Chinese cabbage, bok choy, celery. All kinds of yams you can eat. All potatoes, 
like sweet potato and normal potato you can eat, of course. Okay, that's it. You know, the, the list I made is very short. It's mostly for myself. Even the flower from the pumpkin you should not eat because when you pluck the flower from the pumpkin plant body, the body of the plant feels pain and sorrow also. Even carrots, when you pluck them up to eat, they feel pain, yes. And those roots, like uh, white radish and other types of radish, do feel pain. But there are some roots, like yams, you can eat. Sweet potato, all right. Potato, also okay. There are just some plants, some little herbs that do not have pain karma, that's why. Isn't that funny? Yeah, some plants have pain, some plants don't. But that's the way it is. Not just humans have to feel pain, but plants also feel pain. I'm not saying that you have to eat all that I have told you, but uh, you can, you know, in case you want to minimize karma. But nevertheless, make sure that you have enough vitamins and nutrition. Yeah, okay? By taking vegan vitamins and or supplements. All kinds of sprouts you can eat, like soy sprouts or sunflower seed sprouts. And by the way, sunflower oil you can use. Olive oil doesn't belong to the no pain category. When people beat the whole olive trees and beat all their branches, they do feel pain. But uh, funny, you know, coffee, when they pluck the fruit from a coffee tree, the tree doesn't feel pain. But the tea plants feel pain when you pluck the tea leaves to use. And other kinds of herbs, you know, most of the herbs feel pain when you pluck them to eat because their body already has hardened into a kind of a real plant, not just a sprout. The reason why, for example, maybe water spinach doesn't feel pain when you pluck it is because it's mostly empty, empty inside. And the sugar cane also has mostly water inside. And the banana fruit you can eat. The banana tree doesn't feel pain when you cut the banana bunch for consumption. And most of the fruits, they do feel pain when you pluck them. The trees of the fruits feel pain when you pluck them to eat. So mostly there's not much that we can eat. Berries you can eat. The berries don't feel pain. The berry tree is okay. Berry fruit okay. But uh, blueberry is not. Some other kinds of berries easy to fall from the tree when you touch it. Then you can eat them. That's all for now. Yeah. <laughs> the best I told you is to eat air. <laughs> But we're not used to it. Uh, that's difficult. Difficult to get used to eating air like the breatharian people. But it's not impossible. Just don't try when you cannot, because you will harm yourself. Your body might wither and die. So meanwhile, just uh, eat the vegetables that I have read for you and you can eat them with rice or bread, you know, and you can eat the noodles that are made from wheat. Anything made from wheat is okay. Anything made from rice is okay, for example, like that. And many other spices like, uh, for example, the uh, star anise and cloves. They also dry and when you harvest them, the trees don't feel so much pain, almost none. But many spices we cannot, like uh, peppers even, you know, black pepper, white pepper, and chili peppers, stuff like that. When we pluck them, we do cause pain for the plants. And of course, a little bit of karma that goes with it. It's not because of karma that uh, we don't eat uh, other plants or vegetables, but because we don't want to hurt them, that's all. If you do, if you do want to avoid hurting the plants, 
are causing them worry, or sorrow, or nervousness, then you choose the vegetables in the list that I read to you. They have no pain. Or even if you have, it's like nothing. But the ones that I read to you, is nothing, okay? No pain at all. Just in case you prefer that way, you have to see if your body can be sustained with the limited vegetables and fruit. But mostly like bananas, they are also complete fruit, you know. One of your monk's brothers, he was in Costa Rica, and his stubble food was <laughs> always banana. Yeah, he lived like that for many years. But now he doesn't live like that anymore because I supply, you know, enough food, all kinds of food. You see, many people can live with very minimum food intake. You don't have to try anything. This is just for your information, okay? As long as you are vegan, I'm grateful already. And all the heavens will support you. And our planet will be sustained, will be kept safe and sound for you to continue to live on and for your next and next generations of children. If you love your children, please be vegan and teach them also to be vegan, to minimize the karmic consequences and to create a benevolent energy for our world. Then the planet will continue to survive, and so will we. As mentioned before, if some kind of herbs or plants that you make into sprouts and you eat when they still sprouts or grown very little, not grown into a hard body of a plant or a tree, then it's all right to consume. But it's better if you have your own garden, then you can decide. You see, for example, if a peppermint plant planted by you, in your own garden, then you can use it if you cut the leaves very far away from the stem or from the body of the peppermint plant, then that doesn't cause that much pain, very little or almost zero. Or like basil, you can cut like just two-thirds of the leaves and leave the bottom part of the leaves still attached to the plant and some little leaves still left, then the new leaves will grow in that corner between the leaf stem and the body of the plant. New leaves will spring forth and grow. For many herbs, it's like that. But some herbs, you have to cut the whole branch, even a small twig, then it will cause pain. For example, rosemary. If you want to use the rosemary, you, you have to cut a twig or a, a part of the twig. That would cause pain for the rosemary plant, or bush, you call them. And those berries that you can just easily pick, almost like it will fall into your hand if you touch it. Those very soft berries, they are okay. They don't feel that much pain. So very little things. The plant of the strawberry does feel pain. But like peanut plants, they mostly already wither and yellow before people pull them out of the ground. Sesame plants, similar. And rice and wheat, they already die out. Their spirit left before people harvested them. So it's all right to eat. I am sure there are many, and some more vegetables and fruits you can eat, but most fruit trees, like mangoes and apples, feel pain when you pluck them. But if they fall on the ground, then it's no problem. You can eat, there's no karma at all. They have already fallen off the tree, so you don't do much. Just pick them up. When I saw any fruit that fell from the tree before, I always pick them up to see if I still can use. Very nice also, still. And like tomato plants, we can eat the fruit. And the plant doesn't feel pain because it doesn't have pain karma. Isn't that wonderful? The plants even have karma. So anyway, maybe next time, if there's something else that you ask and uh, I know about it, then I will tell you. 
All right. May God bless you all. And may God bless all the beautiful plants and beautiful herbs and bless our whole planet. You see, our planet is materialized and becomes valuable due to all the beings on this planet's merit, collective merit put together. So the planet will materialize and become livable. And then the planet would be disintegrated, be destroyed, be made to disappear. Also because of the humans, the beings on the planet's lack of merit by their actions, by doing something contrary to building up merit, by doing things that destroy the merit or are devoid of merit. We are not blessed to have this home as a planet anymore. It's just like you have some money to put down for deposit or you have money to build your house. But the moment you don't have any more money or you own money and you can't pay, then the bank either takes it over or you have to leave the property because you can't pay for it. You can't continue to live there anymore. Similar to our planet, it is our home. And if we don't have enough merit to keep it, then we can't survive. We have to leave the planet or the planet will be destroyed. So please be careful what you eat. At least be vegan, okay? Be vegan. The plant kingdom is so rich in nutrients, vitamins, and health-sustaining properties. God gives us everything we need. Even if some people don't have enough food or they can't work to earn money to buy food, The whole planet, if we are vegan, can sustain everyone on this earth. There is enough food to go around to help everyone to stay healthy, full, filled with nutrition from all the things we have or are able to plant on this planet. There should be no one who goes hungry at night or any day or ever at all because God gives us so much, so much. We just waste it all. Like we have enough food to feed people, but we use it to raise animal people instead and leave the humans to starve. That is not right, not the right thing to do. We have to do the right thing to live our lives correctly. Then nothing bad will come to us. But if we commit an offense against the common sense, the logic, then we don't have to discuss about heaven's punishments or merit or anything yet. I'm just hoping that some of the people will listen and try to live righteously. The reward for that is not what we expect, but it will come. And the great reward is in your heart because you will feel happy. You know that you help others and you know that you are doing the right thing and are worthy to be called a human. Not everyone who looks human is human. That is the thing. Some are even half demons or mostly demons. And recently there was a report about scientific research. They have found that uh, the brain of humans is basically very good very gentle, very kind, very generous and loving. Like they have this kind of quality in there, ready, wanting, always. It's like ingrained in the brain that people would like to do things to help others and themselves. Acts of kindness, acts of generosity is how simple it is to make people feel good. I was walking down the streets of New York City and a guy walking in front of me, his backpack opened and a bunch of paper fell out on the, on the street. I didn't think much of it. I bent down, I gathered up the papers, handed them back to him and pointed out that his, his bag had opened. Now in our bodies, there's a chemical called oxytocin. Oxytocin is responsible for all the warm and fuzzies, unicorns and rainbows. It's responsible for all the warm feelings and connectedness we have with each other. Friendship, love, 
Huge amounts of oxytocin surge through a woman's body as she gives birth. This is what is responsible for the mother-child bond. Oxytocin binds human beings. There are many ways to get oxytocin. One of them is acts of kindness and acts of generosity. It feels good when we do something nice for someone. It feels good when someone does something nice for us. On this particular day, I did something for someone with no expectation of anything in return. I got a little surge of oxytocin. I felt good. He turned to me and he said, thank you. It feels nice when someone does something for us with no expectation of anything in return. He felt good. I walked to the end of the street. I'm waiting to cross the street. And a total stranger who happened to be standing next to me said, I saw what you did back there. That was really cool. As it turns out, witnessing an act of generosity <laughs> releases oxytocin. And he felt good. And the best part about oxytocin is the more oxytocin we have in our bodies, the more generous we become. It is Mother Nature's way of trying desperately to get us to look after each other. I can guarantee you that that man who witnessed what I did did something nice for somebody that day simply because he saw someone do something nice for somebody that day. So what if we commit to do something nice for someone? with no expectation of anything in return. Imagine what happens at work. Imagine what happens at home. Imagine what happens with our friends. But it must be genuine. So in Asian folklore, they say that humans originally have a very good quality, noble quality. In Vietnam, we say nhân chi sơ tính bản thiện, meaning Originally, human's quality is very noble, very kind, yes. So how come we have degraded into such a stage that we could even kill others, kill each other, and kill animal people, make them suffer all their lives, have torturous lives, then murder them to eat, and still call ourselves humans, because they have forgotten their original nature, the real quality of a human. Society influences them, and it became like a trend, it became like a habit. So people continue to live that way, legalize the bad way of life. Even governments and laws support all this kind of life. So everybody just takes each other's bad example, and all are falling like that together, down to the bottom of moral standards, and virtuous standards. Originally, humans were not like that. The humans who first came to this planet were not like that. And slowly, slowly, we felt it's also because this world is still full of demons, the demons are made of fallen humans as well. And the more we fall, the more the population of demons increases. And that's how we have the world as it is today. We normalize all kinds of bad behavior, all kinds of low life standards that we didn't know before. We came from heaven. We were pure, innocent, powerful have telepathic power, have magical power, have things that we could use to survive longer, live longer on this planet if we wanted to. We could fly like bird people. We could go without food. We could love each other just like we love ourselves. And slowly, slowly, we lost that because we have forgotten who we are. And it's a pitiful situation that we have let ourselves into. That's why God felt pity for us. Then God sent His Son or His trusted angels, saints and sages and masters, we call them, to come down to this suffering world in order to rescue whomever they still can, to rescue whomever is calling for help to be liberated and go back home. Not every planet or world has such a great fortune as to have a master with them. Some planets don't have. 
some words don't have, like the word of hell doesn't have master. Not every hell has, maybe one or two, uh, very rarely. And even then, all the beings in hell do not hear these master talks. They cannot. They're not allowed to even. This is the problem. Well, not to talk about hell, on this planet is the same. How many masters have come and gone? How many masters have come to this planet and left us after their time's up? And not many people on this planet even have a chance to meet them or listen to them. And even if they do have a chance to meet them or listen to them once or twice, not necessarily that they will accept the Master's teaching, follow through with it, and practice it. That's why the world has never been empty of suffering. It's because our choice has been contaminated with unintelligent decisions, with bad associations, with lower quality life, with demons, for example, or with fallen angels. Do not blame yourself too much. Imagine God created the angel and he could fall. He became Satan, became anti-God, anti-Christ, anti-Buddha. And when Buddha was alive, his distant cousin, you know, Devadatta, also not only imitated him to get influence to be famous and wealthy, but even tried to assassinate the Buddha many times and in many lifetimes. Whenever the Buddha incarnated to help beings, Devadatta also reincarnated as a very bad force to oppose the Buddha, to harm the Buddha, to create things, create events that make the Buddha's reputation degraded, yes, or his life be in danger, or encounter a fatal situation and die, either brutally, or less brutally. Many masters have this problem as well on this planet, and it seems to get worse because the more demonic beings or devils or ghosts appear, you know, those uh, bad ghosts, zealous ghosts, vicious ghosts, the more humans have gone bad, gone low in quality, and the more demons, devils, and zealous ghosts they will have in the same world. And these demons, ghosts, and devils, they influence more and more humans to make them more and more bad, a thirst far from God, and encounter all kinds of pain and suffering, and even become demons or ghosts themselves to harm themselves, to harm others as well, by the low quality that they make themselves become. So please, whoever you know possible, just uh, gently remind them, tell them to be vegan, at least less killing karma, so their body, their mind will be stronger, healthier, and more strengthened to deal with their own physical and mental troubles, you know, because the physical problems sometimes are also not as bad as the mental problems and psychological problems, all kinds of problems, because they don't know how to get out of the traps of uh, maya, of badness, and of, uh, you know, surrounding unfavorable situations and bad energy. Humans are to be pitied, truly. That's why God always sends his saints, his son, to come down and help us, but not all of us are listening. Most of us do not listen. That's why the world continues to be like it is now, and uh, it seems to get worse at times. So we have more disasters, more trouble nowadays, and war from one country to another. We don't know what will happen next even. Most of us don't know. And even if the saints and sages and the clairvoyant beings keep telling us, if you want to avoid more trouble, please do this, do that, live rightly, don't kill, don't steal. Ah, 
Most humans still cannot listen to that and practice those simple principles to keep themselves safe and healthy, normal, and a true human. On the contrary, they find all kinds of things to, you know, slander the masters with or to make them be harmed in any way possible. Since time memorial, it has always been happening. You see how many masters, how many great philosophers, saints and sages have been harmed in this world. You look at the list of history and you know none of them had a good life at all. The real masters didn't have. The fake masters, yes. You know, they have a lot of followers, a lot of wealth, you know, a lot of people worshipping them and giving them all kinds of things they need. And they look uh, good and healthy and happy. The real masters suffer. Only real masters really suffer. But in this world, what do we expect? Huh? Uh, just simple example. You work very hard, sweat and tears every day. Even when you're sick, you can't just always call in sick to earn just some hundreds of dollars per week. You still have to pay taxes out of that. And if you don't pay taxes, then you might even go to jail or get your things confiscated, taken away from you. If you don't have enough money to pay for your rent or your mortgage, then you'll be out on the street sooner than you think. Things come unexpectedly, and then you lose your job, you get sick, you don't have enough money to pay for the hospital, then you're out out of your house. Once you don't have a house, you can't get another job. It's so very difficult. But then again, all this hard-earned money of people who obey the law, respect the rules and pay tax, all this money goes where? Huh? It goes to subsidies, animal people murdering to eat and to, I would say, support war or go against war. You support war or you fight in war, all this needs money. And where is it from? Taxpayers. War and the animal people industry cost billions of dollars, you know, sometimes just in a week or in a month, not to talk about a year. You can read on the Internet, you know how much war costs every day and how much subsidies for the animal people industry cost you, cost your tax. Well, I, I calculated in my book the total subsidies that state, state governments and the federal government provide to animal agriculture each year in this country. And I calculate that number at about $38 billion. To put that in perspective, that's about half of what all states spent on unemployment benefits last year. That number is probably an order of magnitude higher than the number that people typically think about when they think about animal food production subsidies. But that's because, as I mentioned, in this country, we devote more than half of our land to raising feed crops, and we subsidize those feed crops heavily. So producers benefit from those subsidies. When we calculate subsidies to animal foods, we have to include subsidies to feed crops. That includes not just things like crop insurance, but irrigation subsidies as well that are provided at the state and federal level. But woe to you if you forget to pay tax or you don't know how to pay tax just for the few hundred dollars. You'll be in jail, you'll be in big trouble. But your money, your hard-earned money, doesn't have much benefit for you, for your children, because it's all burning war, or flushed down into bloody rivers, bloody lakes, in the animal people rising industry. There are many things unjustified in this world. Injustices are everywhere. We can't even complain. No one will listen to us. And good persons, like the masters, are more often than not, or almost always 
in trouble. People will will frame them, will give them bad reputation, will do anything to make them fall any time possible. Or try to kill them or, you know, put bad names on them, all kinds of things that they fabricate or they invent in order to make the master die in agony or be in prison or all kinds of things that would happen that are not good for the masters. Not to talk about whether he, she will even have followers who 100% believe in them. That's why Jesus dies so brutally. Buddha has been cut on his toe and avoided death many times. Many other masters are not accepted by the normal system and die either quietly or publicly in such a way that you wouldn't think that a criminal would have to endure. They die in prison by poison, or they die on the cross by crucifixion, or they die by assassination, or they die by being accused wrongly. And even their reputation also dies with them. And then later on, you know, uh, people build temples, they build churches, they build ashrams to worship the masters. And when they die in agony, no one can help them. No one can rescue them. Not that the masters care much about life and death, but if they are alive, they can teach us many more things They can accompany us in our spiritual elevation and improvement and thus make the society more sane, more decent, more safe, more peaceful for all the co-inhabitants in the world. But the humans, just don't leave them alone. Don't give them peace and comfort to do their job. If you are a normal teacher, you get paid. Yeah, you have vacation time and you have retirement money even. But if you are a real master, oh, oh, if they don't kill you, you feel lucky already. If uh, you accept offerings from the disciples, then they would say, oh, you just uh, teach them so that you can fill your stomach or have a good house. And if you make money, you make business to earn money to fit yourself and your dependents or for doing your own preaching, uh, paying the costs of all your teaching, then they will say, oh, you you are not the real uh, uh, practitioner because you're greedy, you want to make money, that's why you make business and all that. Yeah, so the master could never win in this world. Most of the masters die in agony like that, you know it. You read all of the religious history and then you know. I do have enemies as well, you know, those I oppose, they are powerful, you know, drug lords, animal people, meat industry, no, uh, alcohol <laughs> industry. They have cartels, they have people who kill also. And my life was threatened, uh, you know, uh, more than <laughs> more than several times. But God still has mercy on me, so I'm still alive. And even in war, you know, I'm against the war. I want peace for all to live and to contribute to a normal life and people to live healthily without fear. Most people have a difficult life already to earn money, to take care of their parents, relatives and friends and their own children and themselves. So war will make their life more hell. You know that already. I am against war, against animal people murdering. I am against anything that harms humans and makes their life suffer. So of course I have enemies, you know. If you are against somebody, they don't like you, they hate you. They even kill their own people. So uh, as long as I live and if I know something 
And if I'm allowed to tell you, I will. There are many things I know that I can't tell you. I'm not allowed to. Also, is you can't do much with it anyway. You know, have a knowledge. If you are meditating, being vegan, have a good master, then you will know it yourself. No need for me to tell you. And if you don't have all that uh, supporting your spiritual growth, then even if I talk 10,000 years, you would not listen. Most people don't listen to me. That's why, you know, <laughs> not only don't listen, but could harm me anytime by different actions, different means. I'm only one and I have to protect myself so that I can continue to stay with you, the initiates, and with my team, the Supreme Master Television team. Supreme Master Television, it wasn't my intention to have a name like that, but heaven ordered me to. I had to. Also, Supreme Master Ching Hai, it's not my intention to have this name, but I have to have it. I do everything according to heaven, okay? According to my destiny and the mission I have to fulfill. If I just have a normal name or even just Master Ching Hai, I maybe would have more disciples, or maybe would have a more peaceful life, you know? When people don't hear the name Supreme Master, then they don't feel, you know, allergic. But I just have to have all that. I just have to. It's just a destiny road that I have to walk on. It's a destiny mission that I have to continue to fulfill. I would prefer to have a peaceful and anonymous life, deep and high in the Himalayas, for example, you know, where the snow is all year round, even in summer. <laughs> and you are so quiet and at peace and alone there. You don't need a lot of money to live like that. The money I earn, you know, normally would sustain me all my life until I die whenever God calls me home. I don't have to work anymore. I don't need to, but I just have to. For others' sake, even for other beings' sake, like the animal people, the trees, the plants, for their sake, and for some other invisible beings, even from lower heavens. Many things, you know, a person who take up a mission like mine would have to do. But we can't always tell you, because uh, if you tell about something good or something bad, the karma will multiply anyway. For example, if you give somebody money and you keep telling about it, <laughs> then you owe money. <laughs> you owe more money than what you give. That is a problem. But I have to do everything in the physical world openly, mostly openly, just to let my disciples see the example and do it themselves. But mostly I do it. And because we have a TV channel and I can't do it all myself, so it has to go through accountants, for example, or some special department who takes care of that for me, then they would know that. Then everyone would know that, because also we have Supreme Master TV, and they will put it on TV, for example. There's no end. There's not much I can avoid in the physical world. I prefer, really, to give anywhere to anyone by cash, because like this I don't have to go through, you know, the... <laughs> The system, like with the accountant or with uh, the department concerned, but it's not always possible. Of course, it is possible because sometimes I can give by cash personally and nobody would know. I would not tell <laughs> anyone. But mostly I have to rely on my team, the concerned department, in order to wire money to wherever we need to help people. Yes, and that's why most of them are official and uh, open. And also in some official cases, if the receiver prefers not to be known by the public, then we will also not uh, announce it anywhere. And even sometimes I want to give to some big organization, 
but because of my name, I, I can't do it. I have to ask someone else to do it for me. But still, I, I pay the money for that. And one time I even asked the bank uh, manager to use my money in his name in order to give it away to some good organization to help uh, refugees, for example. Yeah. But that one also was not for my department or my team to know. Only that person in the bank knew. Just at the moment, I keep as quiet as possible, meditate for the world, listen to heaven's messages, you know, because sometimes they would tell me something to keep me safe, yeah? How to keep safe at this moment, at that place, for example, like that. So I'm quite busy all day, all night, actually. And I live a simple life, eat simple food, nah? Yeah? And I don't have to wear a lot of uh, luxury-looking clothes or a rich and, uh, you know, glorious jewelry that I designed. Yes. I really prefer this type of life. But I'm still contributing to the world, visibly and invisibly. I'm just telling you some of these things so that you know everyone will get blamed, even if they do good things. And the more you do good things, spiritually especially, the more you will be blamed and will be in risky situations in life. All right, I need to go do some inner conference now. I hope I will talk to you another day when I have something really important to tell you. But I always have to ask God's permission first for even that. So you understand why I don't talk much more to you. Just uh, try to meditate more, okay? As much as you can. Anytime, even when you sit in the bus or in the train, just don't miss your, don't miss your station, yeah? <laughs> and, uh, you know, try to spread veganism and the righteous way to live your life. That will help others to awaken somehow. And... Uh, it will help this world to become a better place or even become a paradise, we hope, <laughs> by God's grace. I wish all of you the best, as usual, in spiritual practice, further enlightenment, and that everything noble, good, and reasonable of your wish comes true. Amen. We thank God Almighty. We thank the ultimate master, the Son of God. We thank all the saints and sages in all directions and of all times. Take care. Till later. Don't forget God. Don't forget to thank God every day. Huh? Not just during our time, but also in your private time, whenever you can, whenever you remember. Think of God. Thank God. Okay? Love God and try to love all your neighbors, the humans and the animal people, plants and trees on this planet. Remember to thank God, all the masters of all times, for the food you eat with humility, gratitude and love. Thank you. So long. God bless. God love. Our humble appreciation for most benevolent master sharing her precious inner knowledge that allows us to understand the world around us better as we also reconnect to our original pure self-nature. As master's enlightening teachings touch many more lives, may our planet rejoice in more abundance, beauty and peaceful spirit supported by our collective merits earned by devotedly following God's laws. Wishing Merciful Master to enjoy the best of health, tranquility and safety in the mighty protection of all divine beings. For the full broadcast of Supreme Master Ching Hai's message, please tune in on Friday, April 26, 2024 on Between Master and Disciples. Also, for your reference, please check out the previous related Between Master and Disciples messages, such as The Trap Worlds Within This World, 
the reason why souls come down to this world. The ultimate master, the only son of God. The killing, terrifying world between karma gap. What's this world made of? Together we can erase world karma, etc. To view these and more related Between Master and Disciples messages and conferences, all free for download, please visit suprememastertv.com and search for Cause Less Pain.